Hi and welcome back or welcome if you're here for the first time. I'm terrible at hand lettering or calligraphy, but I have a bit of a reoccurring interest in learning it. While I was looking into inks recently, I was surprised how expensive they can be. You can easily pay 20 or 25 euros or more for a single bottle of ink. But I discovered the set of Sailor brush markers for 46 to 50 euros on Amazon. And I thought they would be a great way to check out various colors and see if I liked any enough to buy them as ink bottles. Sailor is a Japanese brand which has been manufacturing fountain pens since 1911 and they have lots of interesting looking inks as well. This is their Shiki Ori series and it was a gift from my brother for my birthday. Shiki Ori means four seasons weave and the weave is also the symbol of this series. The front of the packaging also says that this is a set of 20 twin tip water-based ink markers. Flipping to the side, we just get the name of the set again. And here we have our list of markers on the back. The back side says that these are the same inks as the fountain pen inks and you can combine them as well. These markers come with a brush tip and a fine tip. The name of the Four Seasons weave is also explained here. It says this is a series of stationary goods through which you can feel the four seasons which are interwoven with Japanese nature. There's not much on the other side and we will take a closer look and swatch all of these colors in a moment. I was confused by the order that these colors are in and I ended up rearranging them for my swatches but I found out later that these are in fact also sold as spring, summer, fall and winter sets and that is the order that they are in in this set of 20. But at least in my country the smaller seasonal sets are so expensive you might as well just buy the set of 20. As a small note on the packaging these come with a little paper divider in the middle and this is very useful so you can sort the markers back into the packaging. I mostly noticed it because my acrylic markers do not have this kind of a divider and it's almost impossible to put the markers into any kind of order when you're trying to put them back into the packaging. Now onto the markers themselves. This is what they look like. They have the name of the brand printed on them and then the rest of the information is on a sticker. This gives you the name of the color. I considered peeling it off to see if anything else is written below it, but I think this would hopelessly destroy the sticker, so I didn't do it. The larger cap with the color indicator is the one for the brush tip. It also has a little thingy here so it won't roll around on your table. And here's our brush tip. I was pleasantly surprised that the cap fits on the back side of the marker. However, the cap for the fine tip does not fit on top of the larger cap. But I guess you can't have everything in life. I also own some Karin brush markers, which is the marker at the top here. The Shiki Ori marker is a bit longer, but this might be misleading. We might have a shorter ink barrel in the Shiki Ori marker because of the second tip. We are also unable to see how much ink is left inside, which is always a feature that I appreciate in markers. The Karin brush markers have a larger brush tip, but I actually prefer the size of the Shiki Ori markers. The brush tip of the Karin markers often feels a little bit too large for me, in particular when working in my bullet journal. I gave both of these a try on a hand lettering paper, and the Karin brush markers are some of the juiciest markers that I've ever owned. By comparison, the Shiki Ori markers are also juicy, just not quite as juicy. Depending on the paper, you can also see where the lines overlap more clearly with the Shiki Ori markers. Now we're getting into the swatches finally, and I will go very slowly because I will translate all of these names for you. This light green here is called Waka Uguisu, and it can mean greenish brown, but in this case, it means young nightingale. I'm quoting from the back of the packaging. A young nightingale which has just learned how to sing and is heralding the coming of spring. Next one is Miru Ai, which I think means something like indigo seaweed. And the description says a bluish deep green like seaweed floating 
at the bottom of the ocean. Now I'm diverting from the order that these were in originally and I'm swatching Tokiwamatsu next. This one means evergreen pine, the pine needle that is patiently waiting for spring while bearing the weight of the snow. Next up is Rikyucha, which is a greenish brown tea and I quote, a sip of tea that refreshes you with its acerbic taste and stills your thirst during the middle of summer. Our next one is a lovely dark brown called Doyo. Doyo are the dog days, the hottest days of the year and the description says even the ground is burned dry by the sizzling rays of the sun. Next up we have the very bright Yuki Akari from the winter set. This one means light reflecting of snow, in particular at night. The description says light reflecting of snow and shining faintly in the quietness. Our next one is Soten, clear sky from the summer set. A blue sky without even a single cloud. This dark blue here is called Yonaga, long night. And the description is a poem. A night in autumn, the full moon crosses the lake of the wandering bird. And unfortunately I didn't realize that I was watching Shimoyo off camera. Shimoyo stands for frost night and the description says a night in winter Ice and frost are blooming at the banks of the lake. Our next one is called Nioi Sumire and it means sweet violet. The first part Nioi means fragrance or smell and the description also refers to this. The sweet scent of the sweet violet travels with the calm wind in early spring. And the next one does not quite fit to the color, I think. This is Yamadori mountain bird. And the description says a beautiful mountain bird which swoops down onto the opposite bank of a mountain stream. Our next color is called Fuji Sugata, a very pale violet. And at first I thought it was named after Mount Fuji, but it actually means Wisteria. And the description reads, under the blooming wisteria trees, the young women are showing their elegant dances. Our next one is called Shigure, which means light shower. And it describes a sudden light rain at night, which seems to herald the coming of winter. Our next one surprised me a bit. This one here is Chushu and it means the middle of fall. Fall is very colorful in Japan, but this one here stands for the night sky in the middle of fall where a bright moon appears. Our next one is the pale but very lovely Sakura Mori, which means forest of cherry trees. With dancing petals that invite you in, you look up at the pink forest that expands in front of you. If you liked Sakura Mori, then you will also like Yosakura, Cherry Trees at Night, which comes with a poem again. On a spring night, the flower petals are traveling along the thawing river. This dark red here is called Okuyama, which I would translate as deep in the mountain. And the description mentions the weave again, the patches of red leaves which are spreading deep in the mountains in fall are interweaving into a scarlet red carpet. This next red is a bit more orange and called Yodaki, night fire. I quote, a night in summer, the bonfires are swaying like the sea at high tide. This next red is called Irodi, sunken fireplace. The warmth of the fireplace eases the stinging cold on your skin. Last but not least, we have Kinmokse, Sweet Osmanthus, 
From its pretty flowers, its rich fragrance floats on the wind. Now let's look at these together. My personal favorites are the darker ones, the Shimoyo, the Chushu, and perhaps the Miuai, and the Yamadori. But this is a great set with lots of variety. And if you like pastels, I think you will also enjoy the set a lot. But speaking of the pastels, I think the Sakura Mori and the Yosakura, as well as the Yuki Akari, are a bit hard to read if you're using the finer tip. So if you were to buy a bottle of ink of these, I would recommend to use them with a broad nib. By the way, a lot of the names of the colors here are classic words from Japanese poetry to evoke a theme of a certain season. Just a quick check of the caps here. I think most of them are fairly close to the colors that they represent. The only two that I struggled with are the Nioi Sumire, which is a bit more purple than the cap indicates, and Fuji Sugata, which is a lot paler than the cap makes you think. I wanted to test a few more things. My journal that I swatched all of these markers in is actually a kind of creamy warm white, so I also wanted to try these markers on a more neutral white paper. So this is some watercolor paper on the right side here. I tested how well these would blend with each other and just out of curiosity because the packaging said that these are water based, I also tried adding some water to them. And you will see here that it worked quite well. You can still make out the marks, but it's very faint. During this test, I also noticed that some of these diluted a little different than what I expected. So just for the funsies, I watered all of these markers down to see what would happen. For some of these, I noticed that there's a hint of another color in there when you water them down. Like the brown has a hint of green and some of the blues have a hint of lighter blue. And interestingly enough, three of them didn't want to be diluted at all. The orange kin mokase was also a surprise because it turned into a very bright, happy yellow. Next you get to sit through my awful hand lettering attempts, but I figured it would be nice to see these markers in action. I really like the brush tip and I think it's very easy to use. But the finer tip is also very helpful for adding small details, either outlines or little swirly decoration around the end of the letters. I'm also very pleased with the color selection because there are lots of adjacent colors which you can combine for nice gradients. I'm not sure if I'll buy any of these as ink bottles because to be honest I'm just very happy with them in marker shape already. I think I will really enjoy my hand lettering practice with these. If you know these inks or markers please let me know your thoughts and your favorite color in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy lettering!